Hello and welcome to the Ars Electronica Center to our media information about uh, the program of this year's festival that is about to start actually very soon on September 11th. Uh, usually we call this press conference the program press conference, but since the program has such a huge dimension, we better call it the highlights conference. Uh, talking about the highlights of this year's festival. The program itself you can find already in these two volumes of the books that we are publishing every year. It's about 670 pages. Uh, please make sure that you read them all very carefully because now in this media information we can really give you only a short uh, overview. I think we have spoken enough about the topic, the importance about the topic, uh, and you can read these texts uh, online also. So to save some time, let's go really to the program. How are we going to stage this uh, exciting festival? Who are the partners coming from all over the world? And the first program I would like to talk about is of course our festival university. This is something we are extremely proud. This is a new format. Uh, last year we had a kind of first attempt with uh, 80 students who were here for two weeks. This year we have 200 students from more than 70 countries from all continents of our planet who are staying here in Linz actually since last week already for four weeks to work with the scientists and researchers of the university, the artists, activists and people from our festival on the very important topics of how can we achieve the very big transformations that are necessary and that are ahead of us. And of course, one thing is clear, the most important thing is a new dimension of global collaboration that we have never seen before. So what could be more appropriate than bringing 200 people from all over the world, people of the generation who will actually be mostly concerned with uh, all this transformation, bringing them together and support them also with all the wonderful experts of our faculty. We have, I think, also a nice slide uh, with uh, photos of our faculty members uh, that really uh, shows uh, the very also international and high level community of experts who will tutor the students in workshops, in lectures and in programs. And actually these 200 students, they are preparing a major part of the festival program. They are not just enjoying their stay here, uh, they are really contributing. And there is a wonderful uh, project that they are going to realize. It's uh, an international climate court, actually of course a simulated climate court, not a court that is trying to seek out who is guilty and who has to be punished for, um, so to say, yeah, creating this climate crisis, but rather what could be strategies of discussion, communication, negotiation, mitigation to really achieve this uh, level of global planetary collaboration that we need. And there will be three topics that will be dealt with in three different court sessions. Each of the court sessions has a different panel of judges. One session has a panel of experts from technology and uh, economy as experts. The second one has a panel of uh, professional judges. And the third one is a, judge, a, a panel of laymen, of people from the other electronic audience. And the idea, of course, is to find out how to deal, how to negotiate, how to mitigate in all these different scenarios. So this very, very international approach is, of course, uh, a main part of our festival. And we are very, very happy and very grateful for the support of the Austrian ministry and, of course, for the collaboration with our partner, the Johannes Kepler University here in Linz, who is the central partner, not only of this project, but for for the whole festival. But of course, the festival is a huge international uh, event, but it is very strongly rooted here in the local situation, the city of Linz. This is where it started 43 years ago, and again this year, our networking starts within our own city. The festival takes place on 10 different locations uh, all over the city here in Linz in Austria, and um, as a special event, if you are 
already here in Linz on Tuesday evening, the day before the official opening, we have a kind of pre-opening tour where we are featuring the highlights of the program that are taking place here in the uh, city, in the center of uh, Linz and uh, there will be a very nice uh, walkthrough. So the main places are for those who have been at festivals, you know, our um, St. Mary's Cathedral, the big dome here in Linz, which will host uh, again very nice exhibitions. There is the Lendos Art Museum. There is uh, all the premises <coughs> of the Art University, of course, here of the Ars Electronica Center and Stadtwerkstatt, but also the Anton Bruckner, the music uh, university that we have here in Linz. So this is really uh, the pre-opening and on Wednesday evening we do the real opening, so to say. This is uh, uh, the event that opens the festival Wednesday evening on the premises of Kepler Gardens. Uh, that's the campus of the Johannes Kepler University here in Linz. And this will be an evening that is totally dedicated to, to the ocean. The ocean as a metaphor for the uncharted, undiscovered areas of our planet. We all know, we know better the surface of, our, of the planet Mars than we know the surface deep down under our oceans. We have had more people on the moon so far than we had people down there on the ground of the oceans. 95% of all the biodiversity of this planet comes from the ocean and yet only 20% of the surface of the ocean is uh, already charted. So this is a wonderful scenario for a performance that starts with Jana, uh, Jana Winteren's uh, wonderful sound environments. It goes into literature. We are making a kind of bold journey from very old legends, from folks who lived at the sea. Music from uh, Claude Debussy is uh, also part of it. And then wonderful texts of Stefan Zweig performed by excellent actors here from Austria, Karl Markovic and Julia Franz Richter. Of course, there will be a wonderful reception afterwards with the uh, opportunity, the very important opportunity to mingle with all the artists and the students from the Festival University and all the audiences. So this is the opening and then we are now jumping into the programs. And I would like to ask my colleague Crystal Bauer, she is head of all the programs of the festival, she will introduce you the programs of the first day. Thank you very much, Gerfried. And I've been given that impossible task to now, within the next 17 many, uh, minutes, present you six full-scale exhibition, a screening, two performance programs, as well as the whole Deep Space Special. So please bear with me. We are starting with this year's theme exhibition, Studio Dystopia at the Peak of Humankind. And it's dedicated uh, um, to the theme of this year's festival and looks at the incredible success of humankind while asking whether this success also leads to our decay. While reinventing ourselves, striving forward, finding new solutions to our problems, we are not able to grasp the long-term effects of our doing. The shadows of our actions are most visible of at the peak of humankind. And the artistic projects underline that, it's, that te no technology is able to solve our problems, is able to save us, but that only us when we change, when we accept our humanity, our humankind, we are able to make the path into the next decades. The projects, the artistic projects, are very often presenting themselves in terms of collaboration with scientific um, partners. And we are, many of them have been actually developed in, within the huge European scale network that you're going to hear later more about. Some of them have been developed in residency program over the last years. And also the winner of this year's award for digital humanism Data Nutrition Project is going to be presented within the theme exhibition, as well as a new project by Superflux led by Anab Jain, Kat Austin and Sarah Poluzu, who worked on a new material for vinyl records, but also uh, Maya Smreka, who has been working on a performance together with her dogs, Brute Force, for the last two years, which is going to be staged for the very first time here in Linz. And we are moving forward to the International Gardens exhibition, which is going to be presented in the same building 
at the campus of the Johannes Kepler University in Kepler's Gardens. Many of you have been part of the Garden Partner staging programs in the last two editions of the festival around the world. And this year, we couldn't be more excited to welcome you in Linz on site. Many of the partners bring in their projects uh, that have been developed in the last two years and thereby contribute majorly to the discussion of the festival theme of the question, but how? There is no way that we can just discuss that question from our very own perspective, but it needs the international perspective. It needs the partners coming here from the Bahamas, from Barcelona, from Tokyo, from Seoul, from Jakarta um, and New York to bring in their themes and their most important questions. The Cyber Arts Exhibition, a highlight already since the last 35 years of this year's festival. This year, it's part of the main festival location at the campus of the JKU. And we're going to present the selected winners, the best practice examples that the prestigious jury members have been awarded in, uh, in spring this year. The categories where the projects are select, have been selected in are computer animation, digital communities, and interactive art. And many of the awardees are going to be in Linz, such as the Golden Nika winners, Rashad New One, um, sorry, Rashad Newman, um, Jung Su, Natalie Riviera, and Ori Yoshifuji. And a very special new part is that within the Cyber Arts Exhibition, we are also going to present this year the category U19. 23 projects from young creatives and young professionals from us, Austria are going to be one of the highlight, discussing the perspectives of this young generation, how they deal with the climate crisis and what especially their concerns are at the moment and their very personal feeling towards the upcoming decades. And it's important to highlight that the diverse perspective amongst the winners as they come from Japan, Colombia, Kenya, but also Taiwan is one of the highlights within this year's presentation as well as the activistic background of many of those projects that empower communities around the world to act up. The State of the Artist, another exhibition, a highlight within this year's festival. A week ago, we've announced the winners. And this is a collaboration that was started in view of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Ars Electronica and the Federal Ministry of Austria issued a worldwide open call towards artists that are not able to work in their profession, whether because of war or whether because they are not able to speak up due to political consequences in their countries. Many of those winners are actually artists from the Ukraine, but some of them come from Hong Kong, from Myanmar, as well as from Syria. And some of them are going to be with us in Linz. As an international audience, please also have a look at the virtual Kunsthalle, where the winners are already presented and you can look at the works in detail. During the festival, we are going to dedicate the Ars Electronica channel, the TV channel that many of you are already familiar with, to the State of the Artist initiative and to the winners giving them a voice to present their perspective, to talk about their situation in exchange with the international jury members of the program. The LIT exhibition is a close collaboration and already goes in the third year with the Johannes Kepler University. Again, this year, Ars Electronica artists and many professors and students from the Johannes Kepler University are working together in close collaborations for several months in order to create and develop new projects that are premiered within the festival. The project come out of the scientific encounters and uh, topics of the participating institutes and are further developed together with the artistic perspectives highlighting that collaborations between science and art are key for an evolution of humankind. Slowly, slowly, uh, we are getting to a close here, but one of the highlights is a performance program that some of you might remember from 2018. There was a huge black box built into Lentos um, showcasing a 4D holographic foil 
theater immersive program. This year, the, the team around Michael Fock comes back with a new production. This is actually the only space where we allow technology uh, still to be within this mystic, um, kind of a miracle within a black box without demystifying it. And the production this year is about that artificial, artificial intelligence actually wrote the theater play. And within the different performances, every time the performance is going to look different. Always things change, of course, with human actors. So don't miss this program. We are moving from the Johannes Kepler's gardens to the city of Linz, to the contemporary art museum, the Lentos. Here we stage a very special program, a parallel revolution, digital art in Latin America. This is a collaboration with CIFO, the Cisneros Fontanals Art Foundation, and Ars Electronica, together with CIFO, has commissioned five projects to artists from Latin America. So in the past month, we have been working closely together, um, developing those projects that premiere here in Linz, in in a couple of days, actually. And the six female artists, they come from Mexico, um, Panama, Argentina, and Brazil, and explore their identity, culture, and history using technology while looking at the themes that affect us all, like the effects of climate crisis, social inequality, and how history is inscribed in the walls of the buildings we live in. The lineup in the deep space is as exquisite and special as always. We will have a close-up at the Mona Lisa in collaboration with the Grand Palais and Massive and look at frescoes from the 16 Chapel that were developed together or that were um, photographed together with the Vatican Museums in Rome. The huge projection surface also turns into an observatory helping us to understand the effects of climate crisis through data from the European Space uh, Observatory uh, uh, Agency through the ESA. And the deep space, of course, is also a performance space highlighting various programs from Machina Mekava to a collaboration with Ableton, as well as a project percentage, a huge co collaboration with Taika from Taiwan, and a special screening of the winners of the WH Award from Seoul in Korea. Last but not least, at least from my part, is the campus exhibition. 2019 was the last time we had this huge campus exhibition in Post City. In the last two years, the campus partner turned into garden partners, hosting programs within their institution in their respective locations and countries. This year, we couldn't be more excited to welcome 30 of them again in Linz, coming here with the project that have been developed in the last two years, students and professors and professionals, of course, to bring their perspectives, asking again that question, but the, the but how, answering it through different artistic project and prototype. The location for the campus exhibition is the Kunst University, the Art and Design University of Linz. The two building, one of them is dedicated to the international campus partners, while the other one highlights the different departments and faculty of the Art University here in Linz. They developed a whole exhibition program around the topic of von schwarzen Schwänen, from black swans, which is a phenomenon where for a very long time we actually believed that black swans simply didn't exist. And this building is not the only area where the art university is presented, but it also, parts of them, and namely Interface Cultures, where there's a department led by Christa Sommerer and Laurent Mignonot, also moves with their exhibition to the Johannes Kepler University. The, namely, the exhibition is titled uh, Crossing Bridges, giving us a perspective of this long-term collaboration of the students this year within the core venue of the festival. And just as a side note, uh, there is a retrospective exhibition of Christa Sommerer and Laurent Mignonot in the Oka Center in Linz. And now we'll actually move to the next day, to Thursday, and I'm excited to welcome Ide Ogawa, director of the Future Lab. Thank you very much. <laughs> so many inspirational programs already. And uh, 
I hope, uh, yeah, you, you are enjoying this festival. But uh, we are, in, in a way, responsible on the second day as a future lab day. Uh, our Sectronica Future Lab is a laboratory and atelier for future systems. And our laboratory is envisioning the future through prototypical approach, but together with global innovators, industries, government, and also educators, together with our innovative researchers, we would like to uh, show our process through a day. So in the morning, uh, we are starting from a uh, uh, kickoff in a conference titled uh, Creative Residence for uh, Planet B. So this is uh, our initial creative question for the first big question about this year's festival, and uh, what's the meaning of creativity in our time? So together with a uh, very unique uh, background diversity, such as uh, industry partners, BMW Group Design Lead, and also Vice President, uh, Senior Vice President, BMW Group Design, or uh, Jun Shu and Nat Natalia Rivera, uh, who is a winner of Free Architectonica Interactive Art Plus. Uh, the project is a biofilm net resist like a bacteria, or Yuima Nakazato, uh, who is a fashion designer. So through such uh, very unique uh, combinations of flash talks, we are uh, doing the first fish, so-called fishbowl sessions, which is a participatory discussions. Uh, it's like an open laboratory setting at the Johannes Kepler University. So you imagine, so this is a first you know, index and, and to uh, uh, navigate the entire discussion of the day. And uh, in the afternoon, uh, f based on this uh, kick of uh, inspiration, uh, we have two big portions. One is uh, afternoon experiences, another is uh, night performances. In the uh, afternoon uh, insp uh, experiences, we are starting from the uh, uh, unique sessions, also together with uh, Club of Rome, and uh, we are discussing how to survive uh, on the planet B, and, and uh, what's the new toolkit, new concept to survive on the planet B. And based on that, uh, we have very unique three talks. One is uh, 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 work of the future, second is media of the future, and the final is a humanity of the future. You can imagine just a replace of the future uh, as uh, planet B. Uh, uh, work, you know, in, in the future, what does this mean? And work is not anymore only for working, but how to exchange, how to solve, how to act together. So that's the scope and uh, how to do it. And uh, about media, uh, together with uh, Japanese financial newspaper like Nikkei, we are discussing the role of journalism in our difficult times. So how artistic journalism can be creating a place to stop to think. In the, for the c complicated issues, uh, not only from the people, but uh, together with artists, activists, and media journalists, we are discussing the role of media. And also, finally, humanity of the future from biology, uh, AI, and robotics. So, what is the defined you know, uh, kind of possible futures? So, we are talking about what is the future literacy, you know, how to you know, survive on the such technosphere, not only for s from scientific industry thinking, but uh, uh, this uh, new uh, approach of uh, 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 ideas uh, are necessary anyway. And we have many workshops uh, also in the afternoon uh, at our Sectonica Center. Bio Inc. workshop or revivification workshop, it, they are all about a new uh, code for matter. What's the meaning of life in our time? Or also we have a special workshop for relighting the future. It's backcast thinking. So we have those know-how as a future lab, as a laboratory and atelier, and we are opening those process to the general public. Then so uh, at the end, we have a very special night performance uh, at Deep Space. So here, look, actually this is a deep space and uh, also this infrastructure as a new media was developed by the Future Lab. Uh, how to utilize this uh, deep space as a creative playground also for global, you know, our friends and partners and also our in 
our house artist. Uh, so we are showing many interesting projects here. So uh, at the beginning, we are introducing unique uh, visualization and the usage of this deep space for education and also info visualization, uh, such as uh, uh, deep, uh, sorry, data space. Uh, it's a uh, new collaboration with Nikkei, uh, which is a financial m newspaper. The topic is what is the uh, deep impact uh, of the Russian wars on Ukraine. So uh, imagine if this newspaper is going to be the future, what kind of immersive you know, time and to stop to think it's necessary. So this, or in afterwards, uh, uh, also uh, uh, many in interesting visualization with Cisco uh, to visualize their you know, WebEx, uh, you know, uh, in the you know, uh, COVID time, there are many transactions and uh, communications uh, on, the, uh, in, on the net. What ourselves and what the communication dynamics and uh, what the new you know uh, you know flow and the currency in a way uh, 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 through the earth. So that's going to be a very unique visualization. Afterwards, we have very uh, unique uh, uh, approach of the brain and also artificial intelligence uh, together with piano performance. Life Inc. It's a, a collaboration with Wacom, uh, which is uh, focusing on uh, our invisibility, invisible, you know, uh, vital data like a brainwave and also sweat and all those things. What's the meaning of ourselves? Uh, what if we can consider those information as an element of a new creation of ink? What's the meaning of life ink? So, or you know how you know AI and uh, humans can collaborate each other. Ali Nikran, our researcher, Coriolan, uh, visualizing the uh, such uh, new compositions and also a new uh, uh, proposal uh, of the music will be played. And at the end, uh, we are showing a very unique uh, mixture of uh, future lab artists, de designers, researchers, uh, creative, ex super experimental music such as noise music or other performative ways. So this is all about the future of night. I hope you are excited and uh, please join us on uh, 8th of September. And I would like to pass this microphone to next very uh, special day, starts day, Veronica, please. Thank you so much, Hida. Yes, I am continuing with the Friday of the festival, the STARTS Day. STARTS stands for Science, Technology and the Arts and is an initiative of the European Commission. The initiative itself actually calls for new types of innovation, types of innovation in particular who call for yeah, social innovation, for sustainable innovation and also uh, ecological innovation. This kind of innovation and also the crossing between the different disciplines is precisely what it's called for when we want to master our digital and ecological transformation processes. What in EU language is with green and digital transition really a top European priority will be also the main theme, the main topic of this year's Start Day. The full day conference program actually starts at 10 a.m. in the Kepler's Gardens on September 9th at Lecture Hall 1 and includes lectures, keynotes, panel discussions, tours and workshops. We have a fantastic diversity of speakers with, for example, climate activ activist Selina nairo Klim, with our visionary pioneer Laurie Anderson, um, with the Starts Prize winners, of course, Holly Hearn and Julia Foscari, and also AI ethicist Amy van Weinsberger. Under the title, Repairing the Present, these experts, and many, many more actually, will address the importance of environmental awareness in the context of our rapidly changing ecosphere, also how to deal with ecological misinformation in digital media, and show us also ways of doing artistic research to tackle all these problems. The conference will absolutely culminate and will be a fantastic highlight of the whole festival uh, with our renowned artist, the visionary pioneer Laurie Anderson and the Starts Prize winner Holly Herndon, both really fantastic innovators in the use of technology and music. 
but the conference of starts is by far not the only program of starts within the festival. We will also have a starts prize exhibition where 10 of the starts winning projects, so honor mentions and the prize winners, of course, will be presented in the Kepler's Gardens in a dedicated exhibition. We are very much looking forward to have them here in Linz. Like so many other programs at uh, this year's As Electronica Starts is presented under the umbrella of the European Platform for Digital Humanism. In 2018, As Electronica started this initiative and linked more than 100 partners from all over Europe together. You see this immense, stunning, fantastically diverse uh, map of partners all over Europe. We are collaborating with currently, really just currently, those are the partners we're working together with just now in the 18 ongoing European projects you see in the sidebar uh, here. A big, big, big thanks to all these partners um, all over Europe who are working with us in productions and research projects uh, funded under uh, Horizon 2020, Horizon Europe, Creative Europe and under Erasmus+. Plus. Of course, also a big thanks for the continuous support of the European Union. Without this support, we would not be able to present these substantial programs like the theme exhibition this year, also without uh, the theme conferences uh, and programs of so many types and uh, varieties within this year's festival. Um, one of the grounding achievements actually within our European platform is that As Electronica is pleased to join also the EIT for Culture and Cre Creativity, the largest innovation ecosystem for culture and creativity. The EIT, uh, Culture and Creativity, consists actually of 50 European organizations, uh, including As Electronica, and will be supported by the European Institute of Innovation and Technology with more than 150 million euros over a period of 15 years. Um, the group is actually a conglomerate of large and small, of profit and non-profit organizations, uh, companies of um, yeah, research organizations, of course, also um, universities and culture and creative partners to become the most important representation in Europe for culture and creativity, as well as a major innovation community. Of course, the program actually aims to foster and strengthen the sector itself, but also to show how culture and creativity can actually strengthen other sectors and industries. And this is precisely what we're showing also at the Ars Electronica festivals since decades. We are moving to one of the next formats of uh, the Festival Friday and to the field of animation. Um, the Expanded Animation Symposium is actually celebrating its 10th anniversary. Uh, they are traditionally uh, exploring the ever-evolving field of animation, of animation industry, and also the links of the animation industry to other disciplines and other forms of media, such as films, games, mixed reality, and streaming media. This year's theme will be Glimpses of a Hybrid Horizon and is organized again by our dear partner Hagenberg Campus of the Upper Austin University of Applied Science in a three-day conference program from Friday to Saturday here in the Ars Electronica Center in the Skyloft. The conference will also be accompanied by a screening program of the animations of this year's Prias Electronica winners. And not another long-lasting partner of uh, the Upper Austin University landscape is the uh, Anton Bruckner University. And we are really delighted and happy that after the COVID pandemic break, the Bruckner University is actually opening its doors again for our uh, audiences um, under the topic of Immersive Sounds, External Worlds. The program will actually start on September 9 uh, at 3 p.m. and runs until Saturday evening. They will show how immersive sound design can reflect the multi-layered changes of our world. It's really about actually hearing more, also understanding better than the acoustic pleasures. And now we move actually from the sounds of the Bruckner University to the music in Kepler's Gardens. Uh, since 2003, as Electronic and the Bruckner Orchestra Linz 
are rehearsing, I would say, all kinds of unusual bridge building uh, between analog and digital, between the music of the past and the sound of the present, between art and science. And this is exactly what we will see again in 2022 in a completely new form. This year, the collaboration turns actually to chamber music. Individual ensembles and soloists of the Bruckner Orchestra have put together a three hours program, uh, open air, in the Kepler's Garden at Johannes Kepler University and wander between pieces, styles and epochs um, and will really conquer the Kepler's Gardens all over Friday afternoon. Absolutely one highlight I recommend. I also, of course, recomm recommend another highlight, uh, the Prias Electronica Award Ceremony. The trophies will be awarded to the winner of the Prias Electronica, the Starts Prize winners of the European Commission, and the Ars Electronica Award for Digital Humanity of the Austrian Ministry of International and European Affairs. Congratulations will be extended by all of us, by about 1,000 invited guests, and most notably, of course, the federal president, Alexander von der Bellen, vice-chancellor, Werner Kogler, and foreign minister, Alexander Schallenberg. We will end the Friday with the Serbian piano duo, Sonia Lonka and Andrea Pavlovic, um, as LP duo, who will actually perform new compositions for two hybrid pianos as part of Beyond quantum music. That's the quick one <laughs> run through through Friday. So I'm pretty convinced we have prepared for every taste, um, but the festival Saturday will be no less exciting. Thank you, Veronica. Yeah, I meet you on Saturday. And um, the Saturday is our public day. It uh, uh, appeared in the last years uh, when the festival became much more a platform that uh, this Saturday always appeared like uh, this wonderful mix between local perspectives and the international guests. Uh, it is literally the weekend of the festival so we expect uh, um, the biggest amount of visitors and um, um, as I said in, in form of this wonderful uh, mesh between the locals. Um, off to New Encounters is a program that, that, I, that I'd like to introduce you. Uh, it is a collaboration with a local global acting company called Teufelberger. Uh, and it is actually um, about three crown talks. The contradiction area of our present and what a festival can offer to society is actually the ground of uh, uh, the idea for this project. What we offer is encounters on a, height, on a height of about 20, 30 meters uh, deep into the crown of uh, one of the biggest trees, a platane, um, of uh, the wonderful campus of the JKU, our this year's and last year's and the years before location. Um, the aim there is to create a common experience, a little bit of an adventure, not uh, uh, a fear, a common fear, uh, then rather more the privilege uh, and the exclusivity of uh, a shared experience of uh, a very exclusive view on the all-day life of a festival, but also on the all-day life of a rather complex uh, present that, we, that is currently around us. And uh, we expect furthermore a wonderful view, as I said, a good conversation, and hopefully a qualified encounter between two humans. Up there you can meet, hopefully yourself, in a bit of a self-reflection modus. Um, we also offer our, to meet our protagonists, uh, and I'm talking about uh, the many, many artists and uh, the many, many speakers and, uh, and everybody else uh, joining us, making the program. You can literally book a qualified time with the protagonists of our festival. Have a look at the website. And at the end, um, and it might be also that one, uh, who, uh, those who are looking for work and those who are giving work uh, meet up there and create a contract for yeah, um, another type of a relationship. And that brings us to the next project. It's the job buffet for those who give work and those who look for work. In collaboration with the Upper Austrian AMS, with the Upper Austrian Labour Mark Market Service, we focused on the rather bizarre situation reality is facing out there. 
it is on the one side that there are jobs, and on the other side, we know indeed uh, that there are many, many people looking for jobs, but there is kind of a lack in the protocol of this encounter, where people are asking for jobs, those who give jobs. Together with uh, um, this Upper Austrian Labor Market Service, we created a format called Job Buffet, where we are utilizing uh, the festival as a temporary office for uh, um, those who are looking for uh, jobs in Upper Austria, for the unemployed. And uh, the result is that uh, we will have, uh, in kind of a speed dating mode, um, um, different modes, rather playful modes, where we bring um, local entities, smaller and bigger, um, together with those who are looking for work. Um, and uh, we are pretty proud that uh, a digital cultural event in these days is um, a potential place, uh, play and playground um, for creating work contracts for the future. Another very important point uh, for the festival, and as I already said, uh, introduced uh, the Saturday as the market day, it is uh, um, um, the market of the local uh, organic farmers. So the local farmers are bringing every year on the Saturday to the festival uh, their qualified goods, uh, organic goods, slow food goods, and they're enriching us with their approach of local life quality. The next project is, um, <laughs> for sure, Create Your World. Um, for, uh, for a long time, part of uh, the DNA of Ars Electronica, of the Ars Electronica Festival, we called it the festival in the festival. Create Your World, again, represents the youth perspective. The youth perspective uh, uh, and the youth on uh, which, this, uh, which future we are discussing and trying to decide together with them. With many, many projects, uh, participatorial, activating projects, they are helping us to understand their point of view on our common future better. Um, and uh, in uh, the every year wonderful event that we call um, prize ceremony, the young winners um, of the U19 category, categories, the young critics and the young creatives are receiving their, uh, their, uh, their, um, their gold nickels and their prizes as a category from the big global uh, pre as electronica. And as well, as already introduced, we have the cyber arts exhibition on campus in our hands, in our production, and for sure U19, uh, the U19 exhibition is one of the most important categories and parts of this exhibition. And now um, to a place where we discuss transformation and change, like the entire festival became a ground for these discussions and for these uh, questions. It is called the Transformation Launch. The Transformation Launch is nothing more than a, a place where we think about transformation and change and where we show actions about transformation and change. We put us as a festival uh, in the epicenter of discussion, in the critical discussion, um, with the awareness that in the last two years, where we strongly believed not to disappear, where we tried everything not to disappear um, from the stage of the globe, um, uh, and, and, and create like hybrid events or, or, or mainly online events. Uh, after this experience, we are fully aware and by 100% sure that a festival is and must be and should be a physical event where people come together. But how would you respond, so to speak, this move, this, uh, um, th this inviting people from all over the world, stepping forward saying we have about a thousand and hundreds of protagonists uh, here at the festival coming from all over the world. If you think uh, it is right what you're doing and we think it, a festival like that is needed, um, you have to think of uh, uh, concepts for uh, compensating, so to speak, uh, the, the footprint that you leave. And the transformation launch makes transparent that the festival in our size, with that impact, tries to become sustainable. Tries to put all the actions, including the production, the materials that we are using, um, the mobility uh, aspects and, and, and concepts that we are following, into this concept of circular economy. And what that means is not like a, a story of what we achieved. This means we talk in this transformation, not only, but mainly 
about the obstacles that we face, about uh, the borders that we don't see uh, how to overcome them. It will also mean that we are showing a constellation of partners that, uh, in, um, in, in, in that with the talents that they bring in and um, um, in the network um, of this circular economic um, um, trial uh, would create like uh, a new culture of collaborating. We have it to do with internationals, international partners, but also with local partners. Uh, it is Hakuodo, uh, we designed the transformation house, by the way, with them, um, who is trying to invent the role of communication and marketing uh, with this exercise that we are doing together. It is BMW, a global major um, 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 example from the automotive industry asking without the question, not about what mobility in the future is, but rather more what, mo what kind of mobility this future that we are facing uh, will desperately need. And we have locals also here, the, the Linzer Stadtkärten, th those who are taking care about the gardens, about the, greens, the green plants uh, all over the city, uh, the city gardens. Uh, and, uh, and the Linzerge, um, uh, who is also locally responsible for the quality of water and for the public transportation. We put them all into a food chain. We close this chain as a circle and we see what dynamic you can, uh, we can lift and what weight we can lift in this new form of collaborative, uh, of, of collaborative constellations. From the transformation launch um, to um, um, the second day of our theme-related um, um, conference, the, the Studiotopia Day, co-creating sustainable futures through culture. Um, what Veronica explained before with the Starts Day and the Starts Conference, where the question is mainly raised what artist and culture is able to contribute outside of the art world in uh, the all day lives of science and, uh, um, and industry and so on, um, uh, will on that day turn gravity in so far that we are requesting and asking the role of culture and art on planet B. Um, what if everything changes in that way? Uh, is the role and the responsibility of the artist and the, col and, 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 uh, the culture. Uh, we don't simulate here a scenario of the future, then rather more, we give these questions a proof uh, that is coming out of the many, many collaborations coming from uh, the European um, um, uh, collaborations and programs that we have, right, that, that we have um, uh, and that we also present at the festival. We will present uh, high, um, uh, speakers from all over the world, but mainly coming from the Europe, um, uh, from the educational field, from the field of innovators, from the field of arts, and, and many, many more, to discuss these questions about our own responsibility and our own future. And now to a project where we are all really proud of, uh, and it comes out of um, the prize that we are giving away more or less every two years. It's the visionary pioneer for media arts. I may introduce you, um, uh, Laurie Anderson, as the winner of, this, of that year. But uh, uh, before I waste our time, I think uh, there is one person, Dennis Russell Davis, who is a personal friend um, and an artistical friend uh, from Laurie Anderson herself. And he has a video message for us and, introduce, and introduces her far better than I can. On Saturday evening at the Johannes Kepler University in the Kepler Gardens, my Philharmonie Bruno and I will be presenting a program with works by Pavel Haas, Philip Glass, and the featured artist of the evening, performance artist and composer Laurie Anderson. Pavel Haas, Bruno composer, wrote his study for strings in Theresienstadt in 1943, where it was performed several times under Karl Anzrell, and of course, uh, Haas was deported and murdered in Auschwitz in 1944. Philip Glass wrote his symphony number no. three in the year 2004, 2005, and it was a work that I premiered with the Stuttgart Chamber Orchestra at that time. Uh, Laurie Anderson's Amelia is a new version of a work which was first written for 
large symphony orchestra in the year 2000, and which I reorchestrated for string orchestra, and we performed it together in the early years 2000, and then most recently on a subscription series in Bruno with the Philharmonie Bruno. Thanks for uh, breaching the connection to Lori. It's going to be a wonderful evening, um, and um, it's uh, again um, for those who are interested in that and who should book quickly a ticket. It's on the 10th of uh, September. Um, there are two gigs. Uh, the one starts at 5 p.m. and uh, the second one starts at 8 p.m. So for those who don't get a ticket, or uh, for those who are interested into bigger events. There's something else going on, uh, rather traditionally and always added to the festival. It's the SoundCloud taking place uh, on the harbor uh, uh, along the Danube in the city center with the title of Mother Gilgamesh. That was the Saturday. And now I give the mic to Gerfried, who will introduce us then uh, the last day of the festival, the Sunday. So to say what's left over, but the Sunday is extremely interesting and important because one of the main programs on Sunday is uh, the pre as Electronica talks, the pre-forums where the prize-winning artists uh, present their work, talk about their approach and are available for you in the audience to approach them and discuss them. And again, remember how this selection comes together. There are about 3,000 submissions every year coming, 25 extremely renowned super experts from all over the world are our judges who make the selection and then the very best of every year are there at Ars Electronica with uh, their exhibitions and of course also in, in person to meet you and to discuss with you. And we have a wonderful final closing concert on Sunday noon. Uh, Maki Namekawa, the world-renowned pianist, uh, is again devoting time and artistic energy to the Ars Electronica Festival and this year she will present Ritual by um, uh, Keith Jarrett, uh, a very early compositional piece from 1974, which really already in a kind of nutshell presents all this wonderful energy and this very specific musical and compositorical quality of Keith Jarrett in a kind of new interpretation by Maki that she worked on also with Keith Jarrett himself. And she will also present a premiere here in Austria, uh, the Toccata by Joe Hisaishi, a piece that he wrote uh, especially for uh, Maki Namekawa. And it's also a wonderful piece. And you know, Joe Hisaishi is one of the really great uh, Japanese composers and pianists who is mostly, of course, famous for so many scores that he wrote for for uh, many, many movies. There is a lot of things that, of course, uh, should be added uh, to the whole festival program. I try to summarize this in a few numbers. Uh, the festival takes five days. Uh, we have 10 different locations here in the city of Linz. We have uh, more than 100 participants from uh, about 20 European Union corporations. We have 200 students in the festival university from more than 70, country, 70 countries from all over the planet. We have 300, a little bit more than 300 sponsoring partners, supporting partners who make this festival uh, possible from the city of Linz to the ministries who support us, to the EU, and you see all these many logos from companies and corporations who support this festival. And with all this support, we can bring more than 1,000 artists, scientists, protagonists to present their work within the five days of the festival. So please come to Linz, make sure that you sleep a lot until then, because when you're here in Linz, life will be tough. There is such a dense and exciting program. And now we are, of course, um, open for your questions. Uh, for this, we will close now the uh, streaming on the YouTube channel, and you can join us uh, on the Zoom conference. Um, so bye-bye to everybody who is just watching. And soon welcome to everybody who is asking.